Welcome back to Cape Chronicle. I'm joined by guest um, Chris Horrell. He is the owner of Bug Zero Cape Girardeau. He's here to talk about how to keep your home uh, clear of bugs this spring. Welcome, Chris. Hi, thank you. Yeah, so tell us, uh, I know those pests get into our homes and we wanna keep them out, so tell us how we can do that. A lot of times uh, th pests thrive in warm and wet weather, so obviously springtime is a, a good time for pests to be active. One thing is just trying to keep moisture away from the house. So whether that's uh, your gutter guards, make sure they're draining away from the house. There's not leaves and you know mulch built up around the perimeter. Um, also limbs touching the house. They've quite access to pests too. So you don't ideally don't want any landscaping touching your home. Okay. So whether it's a shrub or a tree or anything touching the home. And then also like I said, the big thing, the gutter is not clogged. Anything that can, that can kind of withhold or hold moisture around the perimeter of the home. Gotcha. Um, I also know as it gets warmer, mosquitoes become a thing. So how do, is there a way to keep the mosquitoes out of the yard or to lessen them or? Yeah, they're sort of this in the same breath. You know, like sometimes you have like bird baths or something that holds water and it's good to dump them every once a week maybe just to allow, they like stagnant water. So if the water is stale or sitting still or a dog bowl or sometimes people have dog pools around their house that sit still and they don't get stirred up a lot. So dumping those once a week is kind of kind of reduces your breeding sites. I mean, even if something as small as a frisbee can have enough moisture in it for a, a mosquitoes to lay eggs. So you just kind of, oh. if you can minimize what moisture you have on the perimeter of your home, really helps a lot. At least they're not breeding on your property, at least. So anything you do that's just not holding water. I didn't even think of that. The yeah. Having we have dog bowls on our back porch and. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't take a lot. I mean, even like you know, soda cans or things that are gathering water outside that might be holding our kid toys or stuff like that even. So what are some some pests that are, you know, like that you see a lot more of in the spring that we should be aware of? Um, um, probably, probably the biggest one's going to, termites are one that's obviously a, a destructive one. And this time of year when it gets a little, right around now, we start, we start actually seeing a few swarms and termites will swarm in the spring. And essentially it's just the reproductive termites leaving the colony, more or less looking to expand essentially. And they just kind of blow out in the wind. Obviously we've been windy lately, so they can blow where the wind takes them, you know, and so they can blow out into a field, not cause you any issue, or they can blow up against your house and try to start a new colony. And sometimes that's the first indication people have that they may have termites is they find a swarm like in, on, in a garage or on the side of the house or even on an interior wall as possible. So if you find that, the best thing to do is to hang on to the specimen. We want to identify it and make sure it's a termite. There's also winged ants, which look very similar. So we want to make sure it's a termite and not a winged ant. And then we can, and then we can do a treatment, obviously, for those. Oh, awesome. I didn't, I guess I didn't realize that yeah. was something that occurred. And that's usually in the spring, the spring type indications. So it typically only swarm in the spring. Okay. And so it's one of those things where no, someone may not even know they have them. And that's a kind of obviously a red flag. You do have them then. Uh, so that's one you watch out for. Uh, ants, obviously this time of year they're thriving, it's warm and wet. And when, after a heavy rainfall time, people find them in the kitchen because they're washed their food source away and now they're aggressively coming looking for food. So Minimizing food on the interior, obviously. I mean, as far as just you know, cleanliness and sanitation always helps. Uh, doesn't mean you're dirty if you have ants because it doesn't take, it doesn't take much food for an ant to provide a meal necessarily. <laughs> so, uh, so those things do help, you know, keeping your uh, like pet food sealed, stuff like that. If you got food outside, make sure your dogs or your pets eat the food. They don't leave anything extra for something else to come get. Okay, gotcha. Um, what about I know bees are probably a little bit further in the season, but yeah. do you guys see swarming of bees or those types of things? Like or you can see a car, like a honeybee, so they can kind of temporarily land on a like a fence or the side of the house. Even this time of year, we always tell people just leave them alone because they'll be only there for a small amount of time. Oh, okay. Or we also refer them to a beekeeper because obviously pollinators are a positive insect. So we, if people call us, we refer them to a beekeeper to come out and they'll harvest them and they typically don't charge anything to do it and it saves the bees also. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I also know that April is a big month for people that are traveling. Yes. And one of the things is people will go somewhere and maybe bring bugs back with them. So yes. what are some tips for people on how to 
maybe control that? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing when you bed bugs are your biggest fear, honestly, for traveling. Uh, they're a hitchhiker pest, so they're going to catch a ride back, is their idea. Number one thing is just keep your bag off the bed. So, what any luggage you have, you put on a luggage rack or a cold surface, a table like this, even something that's not warm, they don't prefer to be on, and keep it zipped when you're not using it. And then you can also, if you're inspecting a room, you can check the two foot of the head of the bed's a hot spot. So looking around there for any kind of evidence of a bug itself or skins or little spots, little black spots could be an indication too. So checking those are your key things. And if obviously if you do find that you found them in your room, you can, we can do some things before you bring your luggage back into your home. So obviously run things through the dryer if you're not sure. High heat, kill, heat kills bed bugs, so you run things okay. through the dryer. As we get into warmer seasons, honestly, even put luggage in a garbage bag out in the sun in your backyard even, because it's gonna get hot enough in that bag once we get around the 80 degree or higher temperatures. So it's another prevention thing. If you're not sure, it's better to be sure. And that's another thing you can do in the summertime. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So just making sure that we're keeping it on solid surfaces. And then yeah. if you do happen to get some hitchhikers yeah. back with you, yes. Try to get them on high heat. Yeah, and everything, number one, I always tell people too, don't do not ever use aerosol bed bug, uh, I guess they call them bed bug bombs, they come, people call them, they flush them. And I know they're labeled for them, but they're not effective. And okay. I just recommend, that's, don't make your problem worse. I always, <laughs> always recommend, because it'll make it whatever you had a little bit worse. So no matter what company you reach out to, just I would recommend not doing that. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. What, is there anything else that we should be aware of or prepped for for this spring related to pests? Uh, there are pests we get calls on a lot to wasp this time of year too and carpenter bees, which are more wood destroying type things. You'll find underneath a deck, if you see like a little bit of sawdust on the ground underneath a, un, like a porch area, those are usually carpenter bees. And we can do treatments for them as well. And then wasps are looking to start new colonies right now. So if you see them flying around, they're, they're, it's the female wasp that over winter are looking to start new colonies. And there's treatments you can do for those as well, but that's what you're probably seeing. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, anything else that you want to share with us that we should be just watching out for? Just, I mean, the last thing I can always talk about is, uh, too, is any, like ceiling entry points on a home. If you can see daylight underneath of a door, it's pretty much an entry point, whether it's a garage door or a basement walkout door. So for mice pressure, for sure, a mouse can sneak through a very small hole. So if you see daylight, it might look, it'd be a good idea to look at your weather stripping and make sure that's sealed tight. All right. Well, thank you so much, yep. Chris. I appreciate it.